everybody. It feels really good to be back with our communication series that we've been doing, gosh, for several years here on Facebook. And many of you know, I'm Dr. Sean and I took a break for a while, so it's very exciting to be back. The topic tonight is about boundaries, specifically boundaries as an investment, not only in yourself, also in others. And uh, I'm like, okay, so we can start fresh and new. A lot of things are changing on Project Forgive. Even our mission's going to be changing, and our movement is changing. There's a lot happening. And um, I thought, okay, what about our mantra of uh, be happy, forgive more is the name of our lecture series. So that's really the bottom line. Be happy, forgive more. It doesn't say forgive and forget. It doesn't say you have to forgive. It's be happy, forgive more, whatever that means. So, boundaries are complicated. I see you guys are showing up. I'll talk to you in just a second. Um, are you a people pleaser or are you just really codependent like me and you have a hard time saying no or you know you feel guilty when you set boundaries. Um, boundaries really are a form of respect to yourself and setting them takes courage and guts especially if something's been violated for a long long time and you've got some angst about it. So we're, I'm going to give you some ideas tonight on how you can start reiterating those boundaries because it's not a one-hit wonder. You don't just say, okay, you need to take out the garbage every Tuesday and you better remember for the rest of your life. No, it doesn't work that way, especially if you've been taking out the garbage every week for the last 20 years. So it works a little bit different than that, and so that's what we're going to explore. Now, before we get started, this is what I usually do. I'm going to mention some things, and whatever I mention, I'll be sure to put in the comments when I'm done. So any links I mention, any partners I mention, you'll be able to check them out. Does that sound good? See what you guys are saying as we're revving up. I see you guys. Yay. I'm so happy you're here. It feels so good to be back. I appreciate you guys. So glad you're here. Love talking about boundaries too. I see ya. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And um, before I get going and saying a few more things, I just want to say thank you. Um, doing the lectures um, has been a missing for me, and I haven't done them since COVID and my mother passing. I know a lot of you know that my mother passed, my, um, my dad passed, my sister passed, everybody passed in a very short period of time. So I've been doing a lot of self-care and a lot of grieving. You can even feel it in this moment, allowing some grief to come up in the moment. And, um, and I haven't been doing lectures, so it's very exciting to be back. Okay, tonight's sponsor is the Good Fat Company. I'll be sure to put up their link. They do these keto bars that are amazing. Thank you, Good Fat Company. Also, our Facebook partner, if you don't know about her, her name is Anna Grace Taylor. She might go by Anna. I like to call her Anna, Anna Grace Taylor. She is an exquisite human, and she is a partner of Project Forgive. She shares us often. I'll be sure to put the link up to her Facebook page so you can check her out. Also, we have masks, in case you didn't know. We have masks that say, uh, kindness is contagious. If you're inspired, please check out our masks. I'll be sure to put up a link. Um, our daily joy. We have a daily joy uh, way to sign up for an email that we send out every day. You are welcome to sign up for that and I'll throw that out there. We never sell your email list. Plus we have a Facebook group called Joy is a Habit. That's a, that's a big theme here at Project Forgive because all of the strife that we're facing, political, pandemic, all the, the racial, there's so much strife right now, it's really important to find joy. So that Joy is a Habit group is really starting to rock. We just recently started a new group so people can share and it's public, and I'll be sure to put a link up for that. What else is on my list of things to say before we get started on boundaries? Oh, if you're part of a progressive company that hires exquisite virtual speakers and they're doing it on unconscious bias or high pressure, high performance conversations, feel free to Tell them about us because we do some pretty amazing things, especially around the conversation of forgiveness as a leadership tool. Okay, here we go. You ready to go? I'll talk a little bit and then I'll see what you guys are saying. Boundaries are an investment and you do have to expect an adjustment period when you start setting boundaries. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of ways of different things that are I would consider boundaries. And then I'm going to also give you some things that I've been doing that have been working, some things that I've been doing that haven't been working, and how I'm mitigating that risk and how I'm navigating to be respected and retraining the people around me. Because the deal is, 
people have been acting a certain way around you for so long and then all of a sudden you're decided you're going to be fierce in your boundaries, there's a retraining period involved there. And to expect everyone to listen to your boundaries and adhere to your boundaries right away without some training, it's not gonna work. It's like setting yourself up for failure because it takes a reiteration of boundaries. I'm hoping that makes sense. So like maybe you might have a boundary with a partner saying, you know, I'm comfortable hugging and kissing you and I just don't wanna do it in public. I'm comfortable hugging and holding hands. I just don't wanna do it in public. That's one that I struggle with because my husband has set that boundary with me several times and I still wanna kiss him, you know, or kiss his cheek or whatever and he, he doesn't like it. So tonight was a great reminder that next time we're in public, or he I can hold his hand or hold his arm, he likes that. He just doesn't want to kiss in public for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. It's not personal. That's just his comfort level. And I will reiterate to him that I really heard that boundary um, because I have a hard time not kissing him. You got it? That's a, a big one. Um, what about work boundaries? I'm comfortable answering your questions, you know, during the day and during the work week but not after 6 p.m. and not on the weekends. That's a biggie. Not answering um, calls or emails or texts after 6 p.m. or on the weekends. And um, I just started working with an organization that I love, the National Arab Orchestra, and they text each other and email each other constantly all weekend, especially during COVID. And right away out of the gate, when I first started working with them, I said, you will get a response from me by Monday if you email me over the weekend. You won't hear from me until Monday and I'm no longer even getting any emails or any texting or anything on the weekend or if I'm getting it they're saying things like I know you I won't hear from you till Monday right beautiful beautiful boundary to set what about um texting versus live calls and then I'll see what you guys are saying um, I'm one of those that texting is very precious to me I'm 56 though okay so texting from my kids my grandkids Certain clients that really love to text, I allow that, if that's the right word. But like brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, and they have these group texts, and sometimes they'll, they'll text 40 times in a row, and that just drives me freaking bonkers. I, and not only does it drive me bonkers, it has me feel not close to them. Um, I'd rather have a conversation. And so those bulk texts, those bulk um, kinds of conversations, I set boundaries with my in-laws saying, you know what, that's just not me. I just don't communicate that way. And it feels lonely to me. And I have one sister-in-law that sends me some devotions um, and, and prayer time that I love. I love that, that she sends me that. And sometimes she might ask me, how are you doing? Or she might put a longer text. I never respond to those. Or I might just send a heart because I don't want to foster texting my emotions. Um, and the reason I do that is because text and email is really hard to navigate how someone's really feeling. For me, I'm very empathic. I, can I, I like to feel what people are saying. And texting and emails can really distort what someone's trying to say, especially if it's a conversation of intimacy. And with my relatives, with my in-laws, with my children, and my grandchildren, I want to be close to them and I care about how they feel and it's worth the investment of phone calls, especially with my in-laws. Is that making sense? What are you guys thinking about so far what I'm saying about boundaries? There's gonna be a lot of comments tonight, so I'll do my best, okay? Yes, I see you guys. Hi, Angie. Hi, Cheryl. Diane's in the house, Angie. Judy. I see, it's showing a lot of people watching. I'm just, yeah. Vicky's asking about boundaries, perfect. Yep, totally got it. And um, and Vicki, I'm gonna assume that's a religious conversation when you say I'm saved, that your boundaries have changed. And just off the cuff, one of the things that you can say is, you know, now that I'm a born again Christian, I'm, I'm more comfortable with this rather than this. And I know it's new and I want you to dance with me. And now that I've accepted Jesus as my savior, and I'm not saying this to promote any religion, just so you know, okay? We're at Project Forgive, we are non-religious, non-partisan. It could be the same conversation for Allah or Buddha. It's like now that I'm following this new faith or now that I have found this, this is what I'm wanting more of. Those are great ways to start those boundaries. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Let's see, I see you guys are watching. You got it, you got it. Bear with me while I 
take a look at all these comments. It's the Facebook is weird now. They tell you every single person that's watching now, so it's this long stream. Um, like hi Renee, I see you. Hi Enza, Gina's in the house. So I'm particularly looking to see if people are making comments rather than just coming. And um, yeah, for me Maria too, texting and email have no feelings. But for someone else, they do. Some people just love texting and love emails and would rather communicate that way. That has a lot to do with how we're biologically, anthropologically made. And so different things feel good to different people. That's why boundaries are so subjective. They're different for everybody. Let's see if anybody's making some comments or has a question. Oh, it, oh Darlene, this is an easy one. How do I set boundaries with my adult child who thinks I have to answer to her all the time? Now, I don't know if you're meaning answer to her with a choice or answer the phone. I'll do both. How's that? Um, it could even be as simple as not answering the phone or next time you talk to her, just so you know, if the phone rings and I can't grab it, please know I'll get to you when I can because I can't always answer when you're calling. And then don't pick up the phone when you can't talk. That's one way. And then answer to her all the time, meaning like you chose to buy that vacuum cleaner, a Kirby vacuum cleaner for $1,000. I'm making it up, okay? Um, she says, I can't believe you did that. I've got some of that going on for me too. And my response would be very loving, very quiet. Well, obviously you care deeply about me, my child. And I appreciate your care and concern. Thanks. You don't need to defend. Oops, I got a little, there we go. You don't need to defend anything. You don't need to say, quit telling me. Because eventually, once you keep responding like that, oh, it's obvious you really care about me. Because the truth is, if your daughter is doing that, or if your child is doing that, they do care about you. And that's usually the motivation for, uh, for things like that. So try that, okay? And I'm just doing that off the cuff. I don't know the whole details, you got it? Let's see what else people are saying. Oh, you got I, I love it. Uh, Noreen, it's resonating with you about the texting. Hang in there. I'm just looking. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Hey, Michael. Yeah, I totally get it. Not being comfortable returning to the office. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, my, you know what, Michael? I would do it incrementally. This is for someone who the founder wants you to come back into the office and he, Michael's not feeling comfortable to do that. I, there, sometimes we think we just have to have the boundary handled and it's perfect and it's done. There's no checkoff list with boundaries. Something that you might consider trying, Michael, that might really work is saying, you know, I'm still not quite comfortable with that. Can we reassess in two weeks? And then in two weeks, you know, I'm still not comfortable with coming in the office can we reassess in two weeks? And is there something I'm not doing work-wise that you're concerned about? Because I can make sure I focus on that and make sure that that's handled productivity-wise, morale-wise, or whatever. Um, I would do the two-week increments, or if you're comfortable, do one-month increments. You know, a lot of people like will ask me, well, can you come speak at our event next year? And I'm saying, well, I'd love to. If it's a virtual event, no, hands down, no questions asked, no problem. Physically, I don't know because I'm not getting on airplanes right now. And um, if it's a virtual event, I'm a definite yes. If it's a physical event, it's a maybe. We'll see. Um, can we reassess in a month? Got it? We'll see where we're at with this pandemic because I take it very, very seriously. Okay, let's see what else you guys are saying. I'll come back to my examples here in just a second. You guys are saying some great things. You're welcome, Darlene. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry about the grief, Judy. I so get it. Just looking to see what you're saying. I'm gonna get caught up. Yeah, Noreen, you're spot on. And especially how quickly you, you respond to texts. One of the things that I do with my clients too is they say, well, we gotta grab you, I'll text you. I'm like, no, my fastest response is on email. And you're more apt to have to wait a day or two if you text me. And so I have very few people text me besides the, so my, my phone is like my joy place because most of the texts I get on my phone are fun, exciting pictures for my kids or little funny videos and so my whole phone is my happy place for the texting makes sense that's one of the reasons why i have the boundary too let's see what else 
Oh, yeah. A b love this boundary, Ruth. Ruth, this is exquisite. Ruth is my surrogate mama. Ruth says, don't take any calls from anyone you do not know. I don't either. If I'm iffy, I'll let it go through. Sometimes I'll even throw it. You can, you can do a search on a phone number on the internet. I don't know if you knew that. To see what else is being said about this phone number. And then once I discover that it's a spam, which it usually is, I block the call. I block it. Let's see. Let's see what else. Catching up, pushing people up. Okay, good. Going back to content. All right. Politics. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. All right, lots of ways with the politics. The politics are so painful right now. I know you guys. Um, I've tried this before. It's worked saying, you know what, and reinforcing it to the family every time we get together. You know what, my brother, I'm so committed to being close to you. Our politics are so on the, on the opposites. How about we just make a pact not to talk about politics because I want to be close to you. When we talk about politics, we get divided. I'd rather be, I'd rather be close to you. So how about we take on not talking about politics? Now that's going to take a while, especially if in a family that's been talking about politics for a while. You might have to reiterate it softly, kindly. Softly isn't right the right word. Kindly and with conviction. Oh, it just happened. You know, next visit, we're back to politics. It's just a good reminder. I play, and play is my big thing. One of the things I do is I go, we went into politics. I'm not listening. I want to go back to no politics. I want to be close to you because I love you. That's what I did with my mother when my mother was dying. Her and I, opposite spectrums of the politics. And um, she always wanted to talk about politics. And I would do that with her and I'd say, I love you, mom. I want to be close to you. We are never going to agree to never agree on this. And that's just what's so. So let's talk about stuff that we are aligned with things that we agree on things that feel good to talk about that will bring us closer as mother daughter make sense um and two if if people have a hard time hearing that another option would be put it on you i love ownership and responsibility um because it doesn't mean that i truly am responsible for the world it just allows me to be a leader and say the things in self-expression that feel good like I'll say things like, you know, for my own sanity, I need to stop talking about this. At least do it for me, for my sanity. I can't talk about this right now. Or going into a house and all the news is on. I limit how much news I watch because it's too painful. It's too much. I can only take it in increments and just a little bit at a time, once a day, if that. I don't want it wrecking my day, right? Um, here's another good one. Um, I was at my, so my mother recently passed in January and I inherited her home. And my daughter moved from Wisconsin and moved into the house. That was a journey of figuring out if that's gonna feel good. And it does, okay? So she's now in my mom's house. And, um, some, and it's moving me through stuff. Like um, I'm noticing like when I go into the bathroom, Sometimes I have a hard time because me and my mom spent a lot of time in the bathroom, um, especially when she was on morphine. She had a really hard time going to the bathroom. I know this is TMI, but I feel compulsion. And so I'd sit on the floor in the bathroom while she would just sometimes just sit on the toilet because she was so constipated from the morphine. We're talking about heavy, heavy duty drugs and heavy, heavy pain. And so we spent a lot of time in that bathroom having the most beautiful conversations. So that bathroom is almost like sacred to me, you know? So when I go over there now, and I was just there on Sunday, right? What day is it? Yeah, yesterday. Um, sometimes it's, I can stay just maybe for an hour, hour and a half, and then I gotta go. And I'll, I'll actually like say to my husband, I, I've hit the wall, I gotta go. And he was really upset with me um, yesterday. And we leave, and I said, I think I need to remind you why I needed to go. He says, yeah, because sometimes you're just so abrupt and you just have to leave. I said, I'm so sorry. I just want to remind you, sometimes it hits me really heavy with the grief being at my mom's house. And he said, oh, I, yes, I forgot about that. So one of the things I'm going to start doing more of to reiterate boundaries and the importance of them, because we're training people. Remember, we're training people. Um, next time we go over there together, before we get there, I'm going to say to my husband, honey, I just want to remind you. I'm only going to stay for so long. I don't know what's going to happen emotionally. I'm going to go with the flow and see what feels good. And um, if I say I need to go, I'm at the point where I really need to go. I'll work my best to give you a warning. And, um, you know, can we 
I just really want to present that for you. And my husband will just say, absolutely, sweetheart, not a problem. So I love that. And also reiterating the boundaries before they even happen. Or when your whole family's getting together, saying, hey, before we get together, just want to remind about the politics. Let's drop the politics so we can focus on blah, blah, blah. And, and start re reiterating. So I wrote a couple of, a couple other things down too. Um, um, some some that boundaries that many of us might be able to relate to, and how do you recommunicate and then also with consequences if it's a behavior that's just horrible, like getting yelled at. Who wants to get yelled at? Not me. Uh, the the last person that's yelled at me was my ex husband. And he's my ex-husband, okay? <laughs> and I've been remarried or been married to my husband for 25 years. So I really don't have anybody yell at me except my mom. Sometimes she did and set boundaries. And also sometimes with my husband, we might get in a yelling match, although that's far and few between now. Um, although sometimes it happens. We get really mad at each other and we're really working it out. But here's the thing. The yelling, like... Boundaries might look like, especially if you have a yeller in your family system or a sister or a mom or an auntie or a dad, and it might be, you know what? I've bottomed out on the yelling. If you continue to yell at me, I have to end this conversation and we can try again later. Let's say he continues yelling. I'm so sorry, I have to hang up now. It's just being the grown up in the morning, in the moment. And it's gonna take, especially if you got a yeller, something like that's a behavior that doesn't just turn off. It will not just turn off. It is patterned neurologically in our brains. Sorry, I got a little buzz. Sometimes it clicks a little bit because my cell phone is close to my speaker. Oh, there we go. Um, so the yelling one, you might have to say 10, 20, 30 times. It depends on how much of an investment you wanna put in with someone that you love. Um, because some people are not worth the investment. Some people you love are worth the investment. They're worth the investment. So it might be, you know, um, here you are. Oh, the yelling's happening again. I just want to remind you that that's not an option. Actually, it breaks my heart, and it ha I have a really hard time getting close to you when you're yelling at me. The yelling has to stop. Can you calm down right now to finish this conversation, or should we come back later? Other options in saying that, okay? Um, also, too, your boundaries can change. Like, you can have a boundary, and, and then you can change your mind. Like, one gal was talking about being a Christian. I believe that's what it was. Um, you know, you have now you have a new religious freedom that you're doing, and you want people to hear new boundaries, and that's perfectly great, too. Um, especially too when someone does something right you want to compliment them like I one of my big things that I've been creating boundaries around is my countertop in my kitchen like my my island for 25 years that island has had crap on it and it it's one of those that I just look at it and I see red because I'm so mad I want that off well I've been practicing what I preach my counter is clean most of the time one time out my might a couple times I might have to reiterate now like for the last four months that counter has been really clean. And so I've been making a conscious, pointed effort to say, oh honey, I'm, I'm just loving this counter cleaned off. It feels so good. And then, you know, somebody listening, you might say, boy, what a pain in the butt to have to do that. You know, what a lot of work. You know what? How much do you love the people in your life? How invested are you in them and in yourself and in having a really loving, intimate relationship? And it takes work and it takes courage and it takes compromise in a very beautiful way um, to be respectful and honor your boundaries and their boundaries. And uh, yeah, so it's worth the investment to me with my husband. Now here's another example. Um, my mother passed in January and I had a friend of mine for gosh, 15 years was doing a, an event on Mother's Day and wanted me to speak at an event. And he texted me, which I don't like texting. <laughs> so already I'm like, oh. and I just responded very quickly with a test. Sorry, that's not an option. And then he emailed me, called me. I think I got maybe 10 emails, maybe five phone calls saying they got more aggressive each time saying, you have to do this. I need you to do this. I need you to share this with your audience. And, and um, I left. The second message was, the first message was, I'm sorry, that's not going to be a fit. The second message was, you know, I'm sorry, that's an anniversary of my mother passing Mother's Day. It's just, I'm just not going to be speaking that day. I don't even know how I'll be that day. 
So what I decided to do after all the emails, all the texting, is I blocked him. I've known this man for 15 years and I re made several requests. I am not invested in that relationship. He's a business colleague. Um, I'm not invested in that relationship, so everything's been blocked. And I feel really good about that. That feels really, really good to me. Make sense? All right, We're on boundaries. For those just joining, I'm Dr. Sean. Our topic tonight is boundaries as an investment, because you're not only investing in yourself, you're investing in others. Um, boundaries really are about bringing us together, not tearing us apart. And the issue with boundaries, and when we're setting boundaries, is the chances are high, the boundary's been violated for so long that you're so freaking mad you want to kill him. <laughs> so to try, <laughs> I get it. To, um, so sorry about that. So to try um, and be nice when you're so mad is inauthentic as well, okay? So you can also be authentic with that anger and it's like, you know what, I really need to talk to you about this because this is really important to me and you haven't been able to hear it. I must be communicating in a way that you can't hear it. But the truth is, I do not want to kiss in public. I love you, I'll kiss you in private, but kissing in public doesn't feel good to me and I feel very exposed. I've told you this many, many times. I get angry every single time and I'm certainly not committed to being angry at you, the love of my life in this conversation. So I really want us both to work on that because and my working on sharing with you when I'm really upset and not treating you like crap, and also you really hearing something that's really, really important to me. Can we work on that together as a couple? Because it's driving me crazy. Another way to do it, right? I see you guys are watching. Let's see if there's anything I need to see. At the moment, no. Um, timing is everything, too. Um, so I saw something that was really cool that I need to set a boundary with. But the timing isn't yet, not yet, because here's why. So my husband takes out the garbage, okay? That's his chore. We have certain chores that we do, and I know it sounds like a stereotypical one, but, and that's his chore. And um, what he's never done before is go through the house and get all the garbage out of all the rooms. I usually do that. So he came in my office and took out the garbage. He went in the bathroom and grabbed the garbage. But the thing is, he did that and took it out, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. But he left everything a mess, okay? Like the lid off the garbage can, there was no bag put in. The garbage wasn't even put back in the bathroom, so I go put something in the garbage. It looks like that to complete. I'm hoping this is helpful, what I'm sharing is helpful for you. Here, let it complete. Come on. I don't know if you can hear that. Let's see if I can adjust. There we go. No, it's still up in here. Let me move up. Oh, there we go. I'll move over here. Here we go. Let's try that. Okay. I'm hoping this is helpful info. This is really helping. If this is helpful. Please make some comments so I know that this is really helping. Um, so the garbage. So the garbage cans. Um, you know, it was it was incomplete. The first time he's actually doing that would not be the time to criticize him and say, "Yeah, but you need to put the garbage bags back." You know, I really want to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you're cute. So you get it. Um, moving forward, I will find ways to keep reiterating the garbage. I'm tapping the garbage can and then getting what I need eventually because I know this is a process, not an event. And I love my husband. I'm invested in my husband. I'm invested that we both feel good in the relationship. I'm invested in being kind with him. I'm invested in being close. I'm investing into all of that. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Thanks, Terry, for that. I appreciate it. All right. Let's see if there's anything else. Another, another One more phrase that I want to share, especially if it's a boundary that's been violated for a long time and you're really ticked off. And um, I can say something like, I'm noticing I'm getting really angry. It's building up. And I don't want to take my frustration out on you. This is really important to me. Okay? What do you do when you tell someone no? Let me look, I like this one. Ronnie, okay. Be belittling me in a conversation, they change how, and they change how they treat you. Okay, what do you do when you tell someone no and they change how they treat you? Belittling you in a conversation. Um, I'm not quite sure, it would depend if it's a work conversation, depend who it is, depend if it's some your husband or your partner, or if it's a child, grandchild, those scenarios would all be different. 
Um, and one of the things we'll be doing moving forward is our role playing with like five minutes updates and helping you with role playing. We'll be doing that soon. So next time I'll, I'll be able to talk more about that in depth with your example. Someone's belittling, belittling you. One of the things that I do, especially if it's like out of the blue, and I just go, whoa, ouch, did you just say that? And then I'm quiet. Authentically in the moment, without shaming them, without treating them like they're the bad person, it's more about this is what's going on for me. Ouch, wow, did you really just say that? Maybe I misunderstood, I mean, really. Okay, is that helpful? Let's see, anything else? So we're closing down, let's see, I see you guys are watching, perfect. Um, it says here they can bring people on camera, maybe I'll start doing that as we start doing some of these role plays. Um, all right, that's it for tonight. A couple of things, well, as a reminder, I really wanna shout out Good Fat Company for being our sponsor, I'll put them up there, they got these amazing keto bars. Also, um, Anna Grace Taylor, be sure to visit her web, her Facebook page. Don't forget our masks, sign up for Joy's a Habit, sign up for emails if you want to be inspired every day. And also too, if you're inspired, please share us. When you share us, you make such a difference for us and that promotes our partners to get more involved because of our reach. So you're welcome, you're welcome, Ruth. Really. I will see you guys next time. Also, two more things. I'm coming back next week. I think it's going to be Sunday nights. We're just like, I'm getting in a swing of, in a flow of how I want to do the Be Happy, Forgive More lectures. I'm thinking Sunday nights at 7 p.m. might be the route to take. I will discover that. I'll put that up here soon. Also, I'll still be doing the Daily Joys, probably more random. Um, although I'll stay with the noon time right now because I come on at noon just for a second, just to remind you to find some joy because joy is not going to happen to you unless you choose it and find it. You're welcome. Big love. All right, I'll see you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye.